The UFC in 2022 has had some really bad judging decisions, and I'm going to go through all of them today in a tier list video and break down what was the worst robbery of the year in the UFC in 2022. Of course, S tier, there's only room for one, and that's going to be saved for the worst decision of the year. A tier is going to be some really bad decisions that you can't understand whatsoever. B tier is going to be like decisions where there was a clear winner, but the judges got it wrong. And then I think I'm going to save like, D tier for some decisions that some people think are robberies and other people don't think are robberies and there's kind of like a, a bit of controversy around it but it's not like you can really call it a robbery just maybe a bit of an iffy decision here or there um, I've got all of the bad decisions of the year hidden around the perimeter of the screen and I'll slowly reveal them one by one as the video goes on and place them where they belong on the screen let's start straight away with Daniel Rodriguez versus Li Jingliang. I'm putting it a B tier because although this was a bad decision and I do believe Li Jingliang clearly won this fight, it wasn't the kind of decision where you're calling into question, uh, these judges need to be investigated. This was absolutely rigged. You know what I mean? Like this was a very competitive fight that judges were just bad for giving to Daniel Rodriguez. It should have gone to Li Jingliang. He won the fight very clearly, and um, it was just a bad decision. I believe it was a robbery. I think fights at B tier are going to be considered robberies on this tier list, and I think it clearly should have gone to Li Jingliang. He landed the more damaging shots. He landed the better shots, and uh, other than a couple of jabs here and there, D-Rod really didn't do much of big damage towards Li Jingliang, which is the main scoring criteria in MMA. So the judges were wrong. It was a clear decision to Li Jingliang, but there have been some really bad ones that are going to make their way to A tier and eventually the worst one in S tier this year. We move on to another bad decision this year, which was CJ Vergara versus Clayton Rodriguez. Um, this kind of came down to round three. It was a very close fight. It was very opinionated. I thought Clayton Rodriguez landed the better shots in round three. Uh, three. Um, he had a better position in round three as well, where he had the back of uh, CJ Vergara. And I just don't think CJ Vergara did enough in that round to mitigate Clayton Rodriguez winning it. You know what I mean? Like, he was sort of behind. He was in a bad position. And they kind of just gave him the round off of maybe doing a little bit more on the feet. But... I feel like he didn't sort of make up the difference with any real consistent damaging shots. And Clayton Rodriguez landed just as good as he, as he took in round three. Plus, he had a position where he was on the back and he had like a calf slicer and stuff like that. So I gave him the round, um, but the judges didn't. It wasn't terrible. I'm not going to scream robbery about the fight, but it was a bad decision that should have gone the other way, in my opinion. We move on to another decision this year, which was... Valentina Shevchenko versus Taylor Santos. To some people, this should be higher up on the list, but I'm going to put it at D tier. You know why? Because I think the commentary made people believe that this was a really, really terrible decision. Round two, if scored on damage, can go to Valentina Shevchenko. It very easily can. So a lot of people are calling this a robbery and saying Taylor Santos sh uh, clearly should have won. But when you score it based on the scoring criteria of MMA it can go to Valentina Shevchenko. So this is one of those opinionated decisions where some people, based on listening to the terribly biased commentary in certain moments, are going to think that Taylor Santos clearly won the fight. But when you really go back and judge it and score it, I think the Weasel even did a video on this, you can clearly see that Valentina Shevchenko has an argument to win that fight. So it's mainly based on opinion. What do you value more? I'm putting it at D tier because it was just controversial. But I don't think you can really say a robbery. We move on. To another fight on the on the on the video, which is I'm doing this one. Calvin Cater versus Josh Emmett. I rewatched it. It is a very close fight. And you know what? I think it's the strongest C tier where it's a bad decision. Do I think it's a robbery after rewatching this fight? I don't think it's a robbery. But there should have been a winner, and that winner was Calvin Cater. And that's the problem that I have with it. I'm not going to say it was blatant and clear, and how can the judges ever score this to Josh Emmett? Because it, basically what it came down to was Josh Emmett was landing shots on the arms of Calvin Cater as he was covering up from big blows from Josh Emmett. And the judges don't know really what shots of those are landing and what ones are getting caught up on the shoulder and the arm of Calvin Cater. And that's basically what it came down to. So it's not like the judges are so terrible and bad for scoring it to Josh Emmett. It's just... 
they should have given the benefit of the doubt to Calvin Cater in that fight by the fact that all the shots he landed clearly landed, whereas Josh Emmett's ones were a bit hit and miss, and you're kind of guessing if they landed or not. So I think it should have gone to Calvin Cater. I thought he won the fight pretty clearly, but I can understand why the judges were confused and gave it to Josh Emmett because he was throwing a bunch of big shots and they were landing on the arms of Cater. Some of them were getting through and there's no real way of knowing what ones of those were landing clean or not. So I'm going to put it at C tier. It's at the top of C tier. Maybe even could be B tier, but we're going to move on to another fight that I'm going to break down, which is... Paddy Pimlet versus Jared Gordon. I've selected it early in the video. This is the one everyone wants to talk about. I'm putting it at A tier. I'm putting it at A tier. You guys don't know about S tier. There's way worse than Pimlet versus Gordon this year. Now, I was actually considering. I'm not going to I'm not joking here. I was considering putting this at the top of B tier because this is a close fight in all honesty. It's a competitive fight. Jared Gordon clearly won the fight. The reason why I'm putting it in eight, at eight here is because the judges gave this fight to Paddy Pimlet based on round one. And that makes it one of the worst decisions. If they gave this fight to Paddy Pimlet based on rounds two and three, it would still be a wrong decision. But it would be like a B-tier decision on this tier list. You know what I mean? Like, oh my god, they gave him round two and three in this fight. It was close, but those rounds should have gone to Jared Gordon. You know what I mean? That's what I would be saying. But the fact that they scored the fight to Paddy Pimlet based on round one screams corruption, in all honesty. There's no way he won round one. Round two, you can make an argument, but he still lost round two. Round three, there's an argument based if you really want to split hairs and, and base it on pure damage over like all of the control Jared Gordon had. Maybe then you can make an argument. But the fact that they scored the fight to Paddy Pimlet based on round one, two judges giving Pimlet round one, and a lot of these other fights on the list so far, they've all been split decisions. Every single fight I've put on the tier list so far is a split decision. This was unanimous to the wrong guy based on giving him round one as well. Absolutely terrible. So, um, yeah, Paddy Pimlet at A tier. One of the worst decisions of the year. Absolutely terrible. And uh, mainly because they gave him round one. And that's just inexcusable. I think this is like the second or third worst decision of the year. We move on to another fight of the year that was a bad decision, which was... Mackenzie Dern versus Tisha Torres. I think this was clear as day, Tisha Torres. And a lot of people didn't agree with me when I first reacted to this fight. But Tisha Torres lost round two, getting tangled up on the ground with Mackenzie Dern, which I would love to be uh, tangled up on the ground with Mackenzie Dern. Either way, I was jealous of her in that round. Um, round one, she clearly outstruck Mackenzie Dern. Okay, it wasn't like a dominant round for her where there's no way any judge can score it to Mackenzie Dern. But Tisha Torres just outstruck Mackenzie Dern round one. She dominated her in round three on the feet as well. But she won round one. She edged round one on the feet. She won the striking, so I think it should have gone to her. They gave it to Mackenzie Dern. I think it was a bad decision, a terrible decision, and I'm putting it at B tier. It's not one of the highest ones up at B tier, but it's still B tier nevertheless because I think it was clearer than Cater versus Emmett and also CJ Vergara versus Clayton Rodriguez. I'm putting it at B tier. We're moving on to another fight that took place this year, which was Jan Blahovic versus Magomed Ankalaev. I'm putting it at D tier again. I'm putting it at D tier. And uh, I've kind of like lined up all of the D tier ones at the bottom of the screen. So that's spoiler alert. If you see me pulling it out from the bottom, it's going to be a D tier one. But yeah, I'm putting a uh, Jan Blahovic, Magomed Ankalaev at D tier. It's a controversial decision. It's not a robbery. It's not a terrible decision where you can't understand why they did it. The Weasel even made a video breaking down the decision, but there was even some controversy in his video where people were like, why are you scoring a medium strike for a teep to the body? from Ankalaev, but a heavy leg kick from Jan Blahovic is scored as a light strike, even though we saw what those leg kicks went on to do to Ankalaev. So there's even controversy in the Weasels who really won video of it. So I'm going to put this one at D tier. It's not a robbery. Um, Ankalaev, if anyone should win the fight, Ankalaev should win the fight. But a draw, it just isn't a bad decision to score that fight a draw. So I understand um, the judges were all over the place, but the eventual result of a draw... 
I don't think is a robbery. So I'm putting it a D tier as a controversial decision that people are split on. We move on to another fight this year that was a bad decision, which was Nganu versus Gan. I'm putting this at B tier. I watched it back. I watched it back. And the reason why I'm putting this at B tier, I was considering C tier for this decision, but some judge gave Nganu four rounds. You can't give Nganu any of the first two rounds of that fight. If you want Nganu to win that fight, you give him the last three rounds, which is still wrong, by the way. And people are, I have not got a lot of support on this, but I'm just following the criteria of MMA. Garn should have won, but the reason why I'm putting it at B tier is because a judge gave Nganu four rounds, which just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. How can you give him four rounds in that fight? Also, Garn should have won because in round five, I've watched back round five, and Garnu literally does nothing of any scoring criteria value in round five. He just lays on top of Cyril Garn for like the last half of the round. Okay, Garn's out striking him in the round. He lands more shots on the feet, lands better shots on the feet. He gets the takedown in the first place. He has control time of his own. He has a leg lock attempt in that round as well. And other than that, Nganu just gets on top after the leg lock and does nothing in terms of scoring and just heavy breathes on top of Cyril Garn for the rest of the round, not scoring anything. So, terrible decision. I'm putting it a B tier. Is it a horrible, horrible robbery? No, because the fight really was that close. It wasn't like a clear win like Jared Gordon over Paddy Pimlet. But it should have been Cyril Garn's win when looking at the scoring criteria of MMA. And 49-46 is nearly a rigged scorecard. So I'm putting it at B tier, one of the higher up at B tier as well because of that 49-46 scorecard. We move on to another decision this year that was <clears throat> Israel Adesanya versus Robert Whitaker. I've watched it back. It was very close. I'm putting it at C tier. Whitaker should have won. I almost want to put it a B tier because another judge gave it 4-1 Adesanya, which is just criminal. I'm going to put it as like the highest, the highest C tier decision. I'm going to shimmy some things around here and I'm going to put it at the highest C tier possible. This was a bad decision. Was it a brutal, brutal robbery? Watching it back. I've watched it back literally today. No. Like there's an argument, but if you look at the scoring criteria of MMA, Whitaker wins that fight. Okay, the striking in certain rounds of that fight outside of round five and round one was even. Israel Desanya knocked him down in round one. He won round one. Um, Whitaker dominated round five and won it very clearly, in my opinion. He won round five. It comes down to rounds two and four. Round three is close. I give it to Israel Desanya. Um, round two and four, it was neck and neck on the feet. Arguably, Whitaker landed the better shots, but the difference maker was he got takedowns in those rounds. He got a takedown in round two that was very, very close, and he got a takedown in round four and nearly took the back of Israel Adesanya and did take the back for a second on Adesanya in round four. So it was a bad decision. It should have gone to Robert Whitaker. Was it a brutal robbery where you have no idea how possibly the judges could score it that way in the heat of the moment? No, but it was a bad decision. And I'm, I'm contemplating putting it a C tier and putting D-Rod versus... You know what? I'm shimmying it. I'm putting Dern versus Torres at C tier and I'm putting Adesanya Whitaker at B tier because a judge gave it 49-46 and you can't give Adesanya round four or five, which is criminal. So, And I think a judge might have given Adesanya round five. So it's just terrible. We move on to another decision this year that was bad, and it is a sleeper bad decision. A terrible, terrible robbery. I'm getting right into it. Nikolai Nagumarianu versus Kennedy Nezachukwu. This was a brute... This might have been worse than Pimlet Gordon, actually, now I'm thinking about it. I think this was worse than Pimlet Gordon. This was a terrible, terrible decision. If you haven't watched the fight, basically it was Kennedy Nezachukwu... Clearly out striking Nikolai Nagumarianu for the majority of the fight. And Nikolai Nagumarianu pushing him against a cage in certain moments to make it look like he was winning. 
Like, that's literally what it was. And somehow, two judges gave it to Nikolai Nagumarianu. Nuzer Chukwu clearly outdamaged him in the fight. You can look at the stats. You can watch the fight yourself. He outstruck him clearly at range. And, and my problem is, he clearly outstruck him on the numbers. But he arguably landed the better shots. It's not like Nikolai Nagumarianu was rocking him every round with big punches. He was landing the better shots, Nuzachukwu, and more of them. And all Nikolai Nagumarianu had was failed takedowns against a cage and control time and kneeing the thigh. It was like a... It was just a really, really bad decision and a terrible, terrible robbery. I'm, I'm classifying it a pure robbery this year. Nikolai Nagumarianu versus Kennedy Nuzachukwu was probably second worst, in all honesty. So, in fact, again, I might put it above Pimlet versus Gordon. It really was terrible. And I know people are going to want me to put Pimlet Gordon at S tier, but trust me, that's just a high-profile robbery. There were some sneaky, really terrible decisions this year. We move on to another bad decision this year that was... Piotian versus Sean O'Malley. I'm putting it opinionated. I've rewatched it, guys. Some people think that Piotr Jan won. I think Piotr Jan won. I think if anyone should win, it's Piotr Jan. But you can't argue with a judge giving it to Sean O'Malley. You just can't. I've watched it back. At the time, I was kind of shocked. But I was like, eh. Even in my initial reaction video that I put out on my channel, I was like, not a robbery. This isn't a robbery. It's just a decision that I disagree with. Because it was very close. And I thought it should go to Piotr Jan. The, the problem is with this decision. It comes down to very few moments in round one. Watching it back, you got to give round three to Sean O'Malley because he cut open Piotiam with the knee. you got to give round three to O'Malley. Round two is Piotiam. Okay, that's the argument. Round two, Yan. Round three, O'Malley. Three was still really close, but round two, Yan. Round three, O'Malley. Round one. Yan, where both of them got a little bit of a takedown, Yan got two, and Yan got a big slam. And I think a slam is more important to me than a little takedown for a second that Yan immediately gets back up from. I think a slam should be worth damage points. I don't know about you guys, but I think that should be written into the rules. If you get a takedown and it's a single leg and a guy just sort of topples over and you end up in full guard, whatever. You know what I mean? If you pick a guy up and slam his torso into the canvas, I think you should get a damage point because that's going to hurt more than a little jab off the forehead. It just is. So I think that should be worth some damage. And I also think O'Malley landed good punches in round one. But Piotian landed like really solid kicks to the legs and body of O'Malley. And I think they need to be considered as well. So I gave round one to Yan. A very close round. Um, the main problem I have with this though. But that's not something that I can really put in towards the decision. The main problem that I had with the fight was the constant cheating of O'Malley. He cheated 10 times in the fight blatantly that changed the outcome of the fight. He was hooking the gloves. He eye-poked Yan. Um, he was grabbing the cage like seven different occasions. So I think it was more about the egregious, terrible, blatant, fight-changing cheating of O'Malley that made him win that fight. Whereas if you just look at it based on who should win based on damage, it's a very close fight that can go either way. I thought Yan won. You can go with O'Malley. Um, it was the cheating I mainly have a problem with. There's a video on my second channel, the MMA Guru Clips, of the cheating of O'Malley that you can go check out if you want. We move on to another fight on this list, which is another fight, which is right here. We've got Armand Sarukian versus Mateus Gamrot. I'm putting it at B tier. It was a very close fight, a very competitive fight, but I think it had a clear winner. And I think that clear winner was Armand Sarukian. Mateus Gamrot was doing better as the fight went on with the takedowns. Round 1 and 2 went to Armand Sarukian. Round 3, 4, and 5 were close. 3 and 5 going to Mateus Gamrot. Round 4, the reason why I'm not putting this at A tier is because the judges didn't notice, and a lot of people didn't notice, Armand Sarukian knocked down Mateus Gamrot with a spin and back fist in round 4. And that wins in round 4. It just does. It was a close round outside of it. Maybe Mateus Gamrot was winning the round outside of that moment. I think he was. Um, but he got knocked down on his ass for a second with a spinning back fist by Armin Sarukian. And in such a close fight that's about control and scrambles and wrestling exchanges and a shot in favor of who here and there. If you get knocked down on your ass by a spinning back fist, 
the round's got to go to Armand Sarukian. But the judges thought it was a slip. They saw Mateus off balance. He kind of was off balance. But when you watch back the replay, Armand Sarukian landed flush with a spinning back fist. And that's what caused Gamrot to sit himself down and have to shoot him for a single leg afterwards. So I gave that round to Armand Sarukian. I gave the fight to Armand Sarukian. Very close, but had a clear winner of Armand Sarukian based on the scoring criteria of MMA. Terrible decision. But you can understand it was close. There's a reason. So this is one of the lower B-tier bad decisions. We move on to another fight this year that was. Khalil Roundtree versus Dustin Jacoby. My word. Um, this was terrible. Uh, I just don't get it. I watched it back. I've watched it back because I needed to understand some of these ones before I put them so high up the tier list. Khalil Roundtree was outlanded every round. There's arguments to say in one of the rounds he maybe did more damage. But Jacoby was landing just as good of shots back. And this is kind of like Cater versus Emmett. But if Cater landed more. You know what I mean? Like, let's say this is Cater versus Emmett. But if Cater landed an extra five shots around. Like, that's how bad this decision is, in my opinion. It would already be a bad decision. But Jacoby just did a little bit too much for you to give that fight to Khalil Roundtree under any circumstances. And two of the judges did. Like, that's the problem that I have. Two judges have to give it. Like, the majority of the judges in order to make this a fight for Khalil Roundtree. If this was a fight where one weird judge gave it to Khalil, it'd be terrible. But you'd be like, ah, oh, whatever, it was close. But to, for two, the majority of them, to think Khalil Roundtree won the fight is just terrible. Absolutely terrible. Dustin Jacoby got robbed. He was landing big shots on Khalil Roundtree, stinging him straight down the pipe with great shots. Khalil Roundtree, it was a very competitive fight, don't get me wrong. But if you watch it back, I'm going to say this again. Just because someone is swinging harder than the other person doesn't mean their shots are more impactful. I'll say it so many times. It's been the case in a lot of these bad decisions. You've got one guy swinging with everything he has. You can get hurt with shots that you don't have to put a lot of force into. And you can feel more impact from those shots. Khalil's landing shots that are bouncing off shoulders and arms and barely getting through to like the side of the head of Jacoby or, or Jacoby's meeting shots with his forehead and stuff like that. Like, Jacoby was sting, stinging him with clean shots down the pipe in that fight. And he just looked like he was in control the whole time. So, I think it was a bad decision. I think it was a robbery. Um, but it was the least bad decision of the A-tier decisions, in my opinion. It's just above some of the decisions at B-tier. We move on to another decision this year that was bad, which was, well, was it bad? Sean Strickland versus Jared Cannonier. Opinionated fight. Do you give value to maybe the bigger shots of Cannonier here and there, but Strickland was landing shots that were doing more damage? And this is kind of like, if Jacoby landed 10 less strikes around, You've got Strickland versus Cannonier instead of Jacoby versus Khalil Roundtree. Strickland landed more. I think you could argue this put at C tier. Because I do think Strickland won when you rewatch that fight. And I think a lot of people don't give credit to the fact that Strickland was landing shots and Cannonier was stumbling out of the exchanges at times. Strickland never got hit by something that made him look like he wobbled. He got hit by stuff that sort of woke him up and made him go, oh God, that was a big shot. But in terms of real damage, other than a bloody nose, Strickland didn't have a mark on his face. And Cannonier had a swollen right eye, a swollen left eye, a swollen brow ridge on his right side as well. He had the physical damage on his face. So it was a wrong decision, but you can't argue. You know what I mean? Because it was so close. I can't even argue what rounds Strickland should have. I think it was like... Strickland should win 3, 4, and 5, and maybe 1. But I think it's just that a judge gave 4-1 to Cannonier that makes it a bad decision, in my opinion. I don't think you can score 4-1 Cannonier, in all honesty. 4-1 is only applicable to Strickland in that fight. You can't go 4-1 Cannonier, in my opinion. So, close. I'm not going to say it's a robbery. I'm not going to even say it was a terrible decision. I just think if the judges collectively re-watched the fight, they would come to a conclusion of Strickland. If judges watched that very same fight 10 times over, the majority of the times out of 10, they would have given it to Strickland, is all I'm going to say. We move on to another fight, which was Shane Burgos versus Charles Jordan. 
I'm going with C tier for this one. Because you can kind of understand why they gave it to Burgos in hindsight. Burgos lost this fight based on damage, which is the main scoring criteria. But the reason why the judges gave it to Shane Burgos, and the reason why I'm only going to put this at C tier, um, is because he had Jord he won round two, no doubt about it, won round two. Jordan won round three, and there might be an argument for a 10-8, but because he didn't drop Burgos or wobble him too badly at any moments, you can understand why they didn't give a 10-8, but it was a very dominant round for Charles Jordan. Dominant round two for Burgos. Round one. Jordan did more damage by like a couple of knees in the clinch that were good and landed a few better shots that round. But Burgos had a moment in the round where he had the back of Jordan and he was going for a rear naked choke and he kind of had it. But he didn't, sorry. But the judges don't really know if he has it or not. Because a face crank is subjective to how hard the person can squeeze, really, in terms of how damaging it can really be and how close you can really be to ending a fight with it. Burgos had a face crank on Charles Jordan, and it kind of looked like it might have been under the chin, and maybe some judges are going to see that as, oh, really close finishing attempt for Burgos. We're going to overscore that compared to the damage of Jordan. But in hindsight, looking at the leverage of the choke, and the angle of the choke, and the fact that he wasn't really crushing the chin, he was kind of just across the jaw of Jordan, you have to give the fight to Jordan based on damage. Very close, understandable. It's kind of like a, ah, they kind of misinterpreted a situation, and that's why the majority of the judges went towards Shane Burgos. Um, but I think the worst part about this was the fact that it was a majority win for Burgos, right? Because one judge gave it a draw and gave Burgos a 10-8 in round two. So that's why it's a bad decision, because there were some off scorecards. But yeah, Jordan should have won that fight. An incorrect decision, to say the least, but not a robbery. We move on to another fight this year that was Vieira versus Holm. I don't have any problem with this decision, but people do. Holm was holding Vieira against a cage and landing knees to the thigh. Vieira had fight finishing moments like this rear naked choke standing here that she had that I've, that I've even put into the picture. Um, and she also landed some of the better shots on the feet for two of the other rounds. So there was a close round where she had this rear naked choke that was very, very close, but Holm held her against the cage that round, so that round goes to Vieira. And there was two other rounds in the fight where although she was being out-controlled and Holly Holm was kneeing her in the thigh against the cage, she landed the better shots on the feet and the heavier blows. So it's like, uh, if you're paying attention, the problem is with women's fights, as much as people act like they're paying attention to female MMA, they aren't. Like, it's a shit break most of the time. Especially a Holly Holm five-round main event because she's just going to hold you against the cage. And that's what she does every time. Um, so, yeah. Ketlin Vieira, Holly Holm, wishy-washy decision. Whatever. Who cares? You're not really paying too much attention anyway. Um, but I think a Vieira decision isn't even that bad. People went off about the decision, though, and said it should have been to Holly Holm because of the knees to the thigh against the cage. We move on. To another decision this year that was. Vanessa Demopoulos versus Jin Yu Frey. I'm going with C tier. Uh, Vanessa Demopoulos should have lost that fight. Jin Yu Frey. It arguably should be B tier. But again, with women's MMA, it's hard to pay attention. And also, there aren't many like big, clear shots that land anyway. So it's kind of hard to score you know what i mean like it's they're they're flailing their arms they look like they don't know what they're doing anyway so it's more of a messy contest than a strickland cannoneer or a cater versus emmett that can be a close decision you know what i mean so that's why i'm not going to put it too high up because i think the female fighters need to make it a bit clearer anyway than male fighters just because of how messy they are and how terrible at fighting they are um but yeah vanessa demopoulos Jin Yu Frey, it should have gone to Jin Yu Frey. She outlanded Vanessa Demopoulos in the first two rounds very clearly and uh, did more damage from her off of her back as well by landing more total strikes. Um, but round three went to Vanessa Demopoulos. Round one and two, though, she landed better shots. Why is my alarm going off? She landed better shots and she landed more of the shots as well. And uh, she should have beaten Vanessa Demopoulos in the fight. But it's a women's MMA fight, so I don't care. We move on to another decision this year that was... Jake Collier, Andre Olofsky. Terrible decision. Uh, Jake Collier should have won the fight. He landed more shots. 
He landed better shots. I even believe, if memory serves me correct, he got a takedown at the end of one of the rounds that was necessary to secure the win. And he got the takedown and ended up in top position at the end of the fight, I believe. He should have won the fight. He landed better shots. He landed more of the shots. But Arlovsky did a bunch of, like, women's MMA shit by just flinging his arms out there and making it look like he was the busier guy, even though he wasn't really landing as much. He basically pulled... I think Arlovsky and Collier is the heavyweight equivalent of Lijing Liang Daniel Rodriguez. Lijing Liang landed more, but, uh, better shots. D-Rod was just sort of staying busier and trying to make it look like he won by flinging his arms out there more often, even though he was missing and not really landing anything of note whatsoever. So, yeah, Collier, Arlovsky at B-tier. We move on to another A-tier fight. Charles Johnson versus Zalgas Samagulov. I'm calling this one out for worse than it was because this made Zalgas... I'm choking up thinking about it. It's not my indigestion. <gasps> God. This made Zalgas Samagulov retire from the sport of MMA. He got robbed in this fight brutally. He can win this fight 30-27. In fact, this is probably worse than Pimlet versus Gordon as well. So I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to do this. It's crazy. A lot of people think Pimlet Gordon was going to be S-tier. There's worse than that this year. There really is. Um, Zalgas and Magulov, Charles Jordan. Or Charles Johnson, sorry. Zalgas outlanded him and landed better shots in rounds one and two. What can I say? He pressured. He landed better shots. He landed more of the shots, especially in rounds one and two. He wins round one and two. It's just clear as day. Johnson did the little flailing his arms out there, acting like he's winning by trying to look a little bit more busy. But the fact is, he wasn't landing anything. He just tried to end the rounds strong. But overall, Zalgas won the fight rounds one and two. He did better in rounds one and two. He won rounds one and two. I can't say anything more than that. Round three, he can arguably win as well. Because although Charles Johnson maybe landed a little bit more and made it more competitive that round, Zalgas hurt his leg and shut down the leg of Charles Johnson in that round. So he should win round three, arguably. Terrible, awful, hideous decision. Terrible decision. And they ruined Zalgas's entire career. He's now retired from the sport of MMA, claiming he can't deal with the judges anymore because even his last fight before this one was a bad decision as well. Um, so yeah, terrible for Zalgas and Magulov. Uh, Charles Johnson got gifted a free win where he did nothing to deserve it. We move on to another thing that happened. The worst decision of the year, 2022. Drum roll, metaphorically, if you will. Um, Lucas Bursky versus Martin Bidet. You might not even know about it, but I know about it because I can watch every single card prelims till the main event. You, if you know, you know. Like, I, I, if you know, you know. When I tell you this was almost one-sided, you won't believe me. How is it even on this list? How could it possibly go the other way if it was one-sided? You tell me. Watch the fight yourself. Lucas Bursky versus Martin Bidet. Bidet was pressuring at times. He was the bigger opponent. But Bursky was on the back foot, out-moving Bidet, and outlanding him significantly and on volume as well. Every round. Every round. There was one round that was closer than the others, but I believe it was rounds one and three, where Bursky just clearly beat him up on the feet, pretty much, and schooled him in the striking. And Bidet, like, at moments was leaning on him against the cage, but Bursky was showing good strength and shaking him off and getting back to the center of the octagon. This was so much what This was the worst decision of the year. Terrible. There's an argument for Nagumarianu to win a round. That's why I'm putting it an A tier. You know what I mean? There's an argument for him to win a round. And visually, Nazarchukwu didn't really land anything that great. You know what I mean? But Bursky was piecing up Bidet. He was taking some shots, don't get me wrong. But it was the worst decision of the year. He clearly won the fight. He got brutally robbed. And you know what the worst thing about it is? The worst thing about it. I think Vieira versus Holm 
was one of the least controversial out of any decision on this list. And same with Blahovic versus Ankalaev. The world was up in arms about those decisions. Ankalaev robbed the commentary, Joe Rogan in the cage, basically forcing Blahovic to admit he lost and saying Ankalaev should have won on commentary. And then Vieira versus Holm, all of the ESPN analysts were saying, oh my God, this is one of the worst robberies we've ever seen. We need judging reform. Bursky versus Bidet, no one said a thing. Just move on. Prelims, who cares? These guys are fighting for their man, like their lives. Holly Holm is set for life. Blahovic and Ankalaev, maybe not Ankalaev, but Blahovic at this point, he could retire and live a comfortable life. He's made his money. And people are so angry and up in arms about these fights just because they're main events. They were like the least controversial. No one said a thing about Bursky getting robbed, and it really annoyed me. It was such a bad decision, dude. He clearly won the fight. Arguably, every single round he outstruck Bidet. But two of the rounds, so clear you can't even make an argument for Bidet winning the round. He clearly outboxed him, pieced him up, outvolumed him, threw more shots anyway, looked busier even though he was still outstriking on volume and on effectiveness on Bidet. It was terrible. He even looked like the better fighter, technically, as well. Terrible decision. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip, I'll see you later. That was a tier list for the worst decisions in MMA. I'm sorry if I missed some of them. I can only fit a certain amount on the screen. Um, if I had to make any adjustments, maybe O'Malley versus Yan can be a little bit higher. Who knows, depending on who you ask. And maybe, um, I don't know, Adesanya and Garn and Garnu. Because you have to go to the technicality of the criteria. They're like the lowest ones of B tier. You know what I'm saying? Certain ones you have to watch it back afterwards to really understand. Because not a lot of, not a lot happened in the fight. And sometimes decisions can be like that. When not a lot is happening, it's easier for bad decisions to fly under the radar. Because you're kind of happy the fight's over anyway. And you don't even care because it's not like it was a crazy fun fight. You know what I mean? But yeah. A tier. I mean, people were maybe saying, oh, I can't wait for Pimlet Gordon to be S tier. It might even be not as bad as Khalil Roundtree Jacoby. Like, there were so many bad ones this year. See you later. Goodbye. Toodle Pip. Yeah. Justice for Lucas Bursky, but he did pop for Oids in his uh, Contender Series fight. So, I don't know. Maybe fuck him and good for Bidet. I don't know.